So we've looked at the first way you could work out an unknown cation in the compounds, an unknown metal. So that's the flame test, which gives you a distinctive colour for each different metal you might find. Now there was one drawback to this method, the flame test, in that unfortunately, it'd be handy if it was, but unfortunately we don't have um, a flame colour for each individual metal. So some of them have the same colour, some of them don't have any colour at all. So it's not going to be like a one size fits all test works for every single ion. So we've got another test we can use if our flame test doesn't work for a particular a compound, particular ion. It's known as the sodium hydroxide or ammonia test. Now you might say it's called the precipitate test. Again, it's a little bit new the chemistry here, but it's not too complicated. I'm going to explain that with a bit of paper. So the scenario we have here is similar to what we had before. We've got an unknown powder. Again, I want to work out what's in it. I want to work out what the cation is first. I've tried the flame test and nothing has worked in this example. So I can't see any clear colour. It's not going to tell me anything about it. I then turn my attention to test number two. What this test involves is this. I can't do it as a powder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dissolve it just in water. It's going to make a solution in a boiling tube of that particular powder. So that's a aqueous solution, we might call it. In the next part of the test, I add uh, one or two things. I can either add sodium hydroxide solution or ammonia solution. You remember that from acids, base and salts. That's a strong alkali, this is a weak alkali. For most of the, the metals, it does not matter which one I add. I will get the same result with both. But we'll look at an example or some examples where you might want to add one or the other to see a difference. What I see happening when I add either sodium hydroxide or ammonia is something a little bit unusual. In that test tube, instead of seeing a like a clear and in, in the sense that it's see through, a clear solution or colourless solution, I will actually see lumps of a solid forming. So by adding the alkali to my solution of my unknown powder, I will see lumps. The lumps are what's known as a precipitate forming. A precipitate in chemistry is when we have a reaction between two different solutions that gives you a solid. It looks as if you have a solid appearing from nowhere, from two solutions joined together. How this test works is four different um, metal ions or cations, I'll get different types of precipitate, different colours or different behaviour precipitates depending on the ion. I can tell them apart from each other and because I can tell them apart from each other, I can work out what the metal was in the first place. So if we go through the start, start of the notes to, to set the context. So when a metal ion solution is mixed with sodium hydroxide or ammonia, coloured precipitates are formed. This can be used to identify the metal cation. Um, you have a little definition of precipitate. It's just what I told you earlier. A precipitate is a solid formed by mixing two solutions. Here's the method you'd use, it's just what I've described. If the test, uh, it's a salt to be tested as a solid, you have to make it in the solution first by putting it in water. Five centimeters cubed of that solution in the test tube, add a few drops of sodium hydroxide solution or ammonia solution if you're using that one. Um, record a colour precipitate. Now the first step we haven't talked about, in some cases you might want to see what happens if you keep adding sodium hydroxide or ammonia you might in some cases see the precipitate dissolving again, which can be a useful test to tell apart some similar looking precipitates, but we'll get to that later. We'll look at the results in a second. You got on the table in the next page of your notes. Well, let's go over the theory of the test first though, in terms of what's actually happening here chemistry wise. So I'll fill this in the right just to speed things up. The key thing is when you react your metal ion with um, ammonia or sodium hydroxide solution, they both contain hydroxide ions. The thing about hydroxide ions, whilst in the situations we've looked at in acids, base and salts, the hydroxides you've come across have generally been soluble because they've been sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, group 1 hydroxides in other words. Many metal hydroxides are actually insoluble. So if you mix hydroxide and a metal, you'll form metal hydroxide which might not be soluble in water. Here's an example. If I took copper sulphate, so that's a copper compound, Again, I'm pretending I don't know what that is, but in this equation, this is what I do have. If I react it with sodium hydroxide, the hydroxide part of that sodium hydroxide will join to the copper part of the copper sulphate. 
to form copper hydroxides. Most metal hydroxides, if they're not group 1, are insoluble in water. Putting that into equation form, remember these two things are solutions, they'll just look see-through. But if I form a solid copper hydroxide, which is insoluble, so it must be a solid, that's going to be my precipitate. So that's what I'll see formed in my test tube. I can condense down a wee bit more. Obviously the sodium doesn't really matter here, the sulfate doesn't really matter here. So they're spectator ions, I can remove them from my equation. If I remove them, I end up with this um, ionic equation, which shows a bit more clearly. Copper ion, 2 plus, in solution. Hydroxide ion, I put the charge on the correct side, um, in solution. They join together and form an insoluble solid, copper hydroxide. So just to clarify how copper hydroxide comes from. Copper is a 2 plus ion, hydroxide is a minus ion, swap and drop gives you CuOH twice. That's the reaction going on in each case. So I'm forming hydroxide of the metal, which is insoluble, which has a colour to it. So, on to the next page, you've got a summary table, which goes over all the results you've got for six different metal ions. Now, one of these actually is in the flame test, copper, we see copper twice. But the rest of these weren't in your flame test um, table because they don't give you very good flame colours. So we need this alternative test to work things out. I'm going to fill in all among go all different colours here and the equations to start off. So here's the information to copy into your table. So we've got six different ions we're going to test with this precipitate method. Here are the colours. Unfortunately, you have to know these off by heart for each different ion. So copper gives a blue precipitate. So just to say, a common abbreviation of the word precipitate in chemistry is PPT. Probably in the exam, though, it's probably best to put precipitate the full word in. Blue precipitate for copper, copper 2 plus. A green precipitate for iron 2 plus. A red brown precipitate for iron 3 plus. Remember, there's two different types of iron ion, 2 plus and 3 plus. They've got different colours. Magnesium, aluminium, and zinc ions give you a white precipitate in each case, which, as we'll come to, makes them quite to tell them apart. But we've got a solution to that we'll look at in a second. The ionic equation basically is kind of similar between each one. In each case, you're forming the hydroxide compound of each metal ion, just by doing a swap and drop of the metal ion and OH minus. So that gives you the ionic equations for each of these different ions here. In each case, the precipitate is the solid formed from two different solutions. So it's got a little S beside it, beside the hydroxide. So we're pretty much the whole way there. We've got a way of working out if something's copper, iron, 2 plus, iron, 3 plus, and also if it might be magnesium, aluminium, or zinc. But the big problem, which probably you're all very aware of at the second, is we can't tell apart magnesium, aluminium, and zinc at the minute. They're all white precipitates. So if I form that white precipitate, I've got no idea which one of the three it might be. The solution I use is what's shown in the bottom two rows of the table. A little kind of second bit to your experiment you can do if you need is you can add extra sodium hydroxide or extra ammonia to your precipitate. In some cases, your precipitate might not stay around that well. It might actually dissolve if you add extra. In some cases, it might stay though. So by the differences, the one by differences in what we see on how some precipitates might dissolve with extra, or some precipitates might remain with extra sodium hydroxide or ammonia we should be able to tell them apart. So I'm going to give you the results if you added to your precipitate as it's formed there. If you added excess, so lots of extra sodium hydroxide, we'll see what happens. So here's the results if we add extra sodium hydroxide. So I probably should say at this point as well, a lot of this doesn't make perfect sense unless you see the experiment yourself. So again, I'll try and link a video for these precipitate experiments in the Google Classroom as well. But for now, let's look at the results. So with our three colourful ones, nothing too interesting happens here. The blue precipitate remains with copper, green precipitate remains with iron 2 plus, um, the, sorry, that's wrong, the red brown precipitate remains with the iron 3 plus. Um, though we have got something interesting here, with our three white precipitates we're finding quite hard to tell apart, we have got a little bit of a difference now. The magnesium precipitate, magnesium hydroxide, doesn't do anything with extra sodium hydroxide, however, both the aluminium and the zinc precipitates dissolve again. So they, they're not resistant to extra sodium hydroxide. They'll dissolve an extra um, solution. They're going to dissolve to form colourless solutions. So I still can't tell apart aluminium and zinc, but I could now tell with a bit of extra sodium hydroxide if I had a magnesium precipitate, because that would remain with extra sodium hydroxide, but the other two white ones won't remain with extra sodium hydroxide. 
So I still need a solution to work out what happens with aluminium and zinc. That solution comes when I add excess ammonia. That'll be like a different experiment I might do to tell these two apart. So again, I'll show you the results for all of them with extra ammonia solution. So here are your results for the excess ammonia. So the first three colourful ones, we actually have something interesting here. The copper, whilst with sodium hydroxide remained with extra, it does actually dissolve the precipitate when you've got extra ammonia. It makes a deep blue solution. Not too important in terms of working out what it is, because you already kind of know it's copper by the fact it's blue, but interesting point that it does dissolve in extra ammonia. The iron ones stay the same as they did in sodium hydroxide, they just um, don't dissolve. But here's the important bit. What I noticed with the white ones, magnesium, aluminium and zinc, is that when I add extra ammonia, magnesium remains as a precipitate, like it did with sodium hydroxide. The um, aluminium in this case does remain, though with sodium hydroxide it did dissolve. And with zinc, it dissolves like it did with sodium hydroxide. So by looking at both parts of or both tests you can do at the end, you can get a difference between those three ones. Magnesium always remains when you add excess sodium hydroxide or ammonia. Aluminium remains when you add ammonia excess, but not when you add sodium hydroxide excess. And zinc dissolves in both cases. So even though they're all white, we have got differences between all three. That is obviously quite hard to, to remember off by heart because lots of white precipitates is remember that pattern. One wee tip I've seen before is to call them M, A and Z, magnesium, aluminium, zinc. The trend you kind of see here is from magnesium to aluminium to zinc, they become easier to dissolve the precipitates because magnesium never dissolves in excess, aluminium dissolves in one and zinc um, dissolves in both of them. So that's one way you can use to, to remember them. Though in a nutshell, girls, it is essentially a lot of learning, this little table. However, if you do learn it well, the colours, the equations and the, the patterns for redissolving in extra sodium hydroxide ammonia, the questions come quite easy because lots of them just rely on you recalling those results. So if you learn them well, you get good marks for it.